Okay, so now when we click on this button, we actually want to see a modal, right? This is a modal component. It works the exact same, to be honest. So I would go here, I would go to components, and then we have modal. And, you know, you can read through it if you want, but usually it's pretty straightforward. You can just copy one of the examples and customize it as you see fit. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And I'm not going to show you the whole process over and over again, because there are other things that I want to show you as well, like the grid system, some of the other utility classes. So I will just quickly implement that and then we'll continue. Right, so I just copy and pasted the modal. I'm just doing it above the uh, carousel. This is the modal and then we can um, customize the modal. But let's actually see if we can open this up. So that's something that uh, we haven't seen before. So how do we do that? So how can we open up this modal? Because if we click on the button now, it doesn't work. Well, um, we are working with a click event again. So usually when that's, when that's the case, you have to give something an ID. So we give the modal an ID. I will call it booking modal. And then when we click on these buttons, we want to signal to Bootstrap that this is the modal that we want to open up. So if we go to the button here, um, Bootstrap is using those data attributes. So here we have to add two uh, data attributes. So it's called data BS for Bootstrap. And it's basically toggling, right? So opening and closing is uh, toggling. So here we're, we're specifying what needs to be toggled. Well, it needs to be the modal. And specifically, the target is the element with, a with an ID of booking modal, right? So now I've given the first button here in this, carous in this carousel um, those data attributes, and now it opens up, as you can see, right? Now, this is not very smooth. And also, it doesn't work yet for the other buttons, but it's not very smooth, right? So if you want to make it smooth, we can add a class here to the modal called fade. And then it's very smooth, right? I'll quickly do it for the other buttons as well. Right, so I just added these data attributes for the other buttons as well, so I can close the carousel again. So now these other buttons work as well, all right. So now we can change the actual modal, right? So I will just quickly customize this, but... Um, it's very straightforward, right? So instead of the title should be book a tour. Um, the body will actually be a form. We'll do that in a second. And this should be check out. Okay, so then we have this. Now what we want in the body is actually a form. And then we have an input here with a floating label, which means that when you make it focused, the label um, appears to move up here. And then we also have this uh, select element with three options. So forms are very important. They actually have a whole uh, section uh, for themselves here, but this is also sort of, you know, sort of like a component. It's just a bunch of classes that you tend to use together. And it's the same thing. You would go here, you would look at some of the examples, you would copy one of the examples that you um, sort of want, and then you can customize it. So here with forms, um, I will actually write it from scratch here because it's, um, it's a little bit more straightforward here. So we simply have a form um, element, right? This is just from normal HTML. So then we have that input. So we just have an input um, element and the type is actually email. The class here is going to be one of bootstraps. So it's going to be form control as they call it. Now we want to have that floating label. So we do need a label as well. So to connect that, we need to give this an ID of let's say uh, email, or email one, email one. And this can be email address. Okay. Now you need to wrap this to make this a floating, uh, uh, to, to make this float basically in the input, we can wrap this in a new element with a bootstrap class called form floating. That's how bootstrap does it. You wrap it in, a, in, a, in an element with a class of form floating. So then let's see. So then we have this um, input, but now the label is already floating here. It's always floating. So we actually need to add a placeholder but this can be anything actually, because it's using the placeholder uh, functionality of the browser to make that work. So it doesn't really matter what you type here, um, but it, that's necessary for how this works under the hood, right? So now we have a very cool floating effect. So then we also have that other one that select and um, it's the same story with a select. We actually also want a floating label. So I will use the same here. Let's see, pick a tour. And now we will just have uh, select one.
Right, I'm just uh, adding another class called form select here, which will style this as a typical bootstrap select uh, element. So in a select, we have options. We have those three options. I will just quickly write them down. Okay, so these are the three options, and this is actually the, the, the form that we want, right? So now when you do that, we have an input and we have a select. So now it gets interesting because now we want to talk about the layout here, because if we look here, they are actually sitting next to each other, right? So we can actually use the, the grid system in Bootstrap to work with this, also because we want to have uh, a different layout depending on the breakpoint, depending on some breakpoints, right? So you can see here on smaller devices, we actually do want a stacked um, layout. And then on wider devices, we want to have a horizontal layout. So how can we do this? Well, here we can use the grid system. So the grid system, what it comes down to is you create a new element with a class of row. In the row, you basically get 12 units to allocate, right? So the entire row is gonna be 12 units wide and you can determine how many columns there should be and how many how many of those units they should take up. So here we're gonna have, we, ba we basically wanna have two columns. So we can say dot call dash six, right? So the first column is gonna take up six of those units and the other column is also gonna take up six of those units, right? It needs to be in the row. Right, and then we can put this first um, div in here. Right, it will automatically this will automatically take up the width that this one gets. Same goes for this one. Right, so now we have a row. In the row, you get twelve units, and we're basically giving we're we're allocating that uh, equally to two columns. Right, so now you can see we have well a row and we have two columns, right? The elements in the columns will automatically take up the entire width. Now we have some default space between them. I think this is a bit much. So you can also go to row here and you can give it a gutter or gap, or you can define how much that should be. You get a couple of options here. We want number two, and that may, makes it a little bit less. So this looks pretty cool, but now the thing is, it's gonna be like this on all viewports, right? So what we actually want is this horizontal layout only on wider viewports, right? So maybe only when it has crossed a certain breakpoint. So here we could say only when it has, you know, when it has crossed this, maybe the small breakpoint and bigger, do we want to have this um, horizontal layout? So what you can do is you can go to these columns and you can say it should take up six units when it, when it reaches the, the small breakpoint. Right, and when you do that, the default is by the way stacked. Yeah, so this is working now. You can see that it's stacked, and then when it crosses the uh, small breakpoint, it gets six units each, and we get that horizontal layout. Now, about responsiveness, by the way, in Bootstrap, I told you that it has a mobile first philosophy, right? So initially, the default layout is that it's stacked, and then we can define a breakpoint at which point it should be changed, right? That's how we did it here. And that's how it also, that's how it always works with uh, Bootstrap. So you can use this infix in the classes. In most classes, we also use this here, for example, navbar expand small, right? So you can use it in many classes, but this always means from that breakpoint onwards and bigger, right? So it 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 starts off from the mobile first uh, approach, and then you can uh, do something when it gets bigger and bigger. Now, does that mean that you have to develop your website from a mobile first approach? Uh, perspective as well like do you need to do mobile first or desktop first well i always do desktop first so even when i do when i use bootstrap i would use desktop first right because that's that's what i prefer in many ways i'm more of a desktop user myself i'm not a very heavy mobile user so i tend to uh, prefer developing websites from the desktop first approach however it does depend a little bit um on your team, on uh, the type of project that you're creating. Um, but simply because Bootstrap has a mobile first philosophy does not mean that you have to create your Bootstrap websites from a mobile first approach. So um, that's just a side note. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you wanna take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you wanna be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.